Welcome back guys, this is Britter, back with the Odin Project, and we are going to be finishing up the git basics. In this lesson, we'll cover common git commands used to manage your projects and upload your work on a GitHub. <clears throat> we refer to these commands as basic git workflow. When you're using git, these are commands that you'll use 70 to 80 percent of the time. So if you can get these down, you'll be more than halfway done mastering git. How to create a repository on GitHub. This section contains a general overview of topics that you will learn in this lesson. We'll learn how to create a repository on GitHub, how to get files to and from GitHub, and how to take snapshots of your code. Assignment. Before you start, GitHub recently updated the way it names the default branch. We already checked our version. We already changed the default git branch to main. So we're good there. And so we're going to jump down here. Create the repository. You should have already created a GitHub account and the setting up Git lesson. If you haven't done so, you can sign up here. Create a new repository by clicking the button shown in the screenshot below. All right, so we're gonna hop on over to our GitHub. We were checking out um, the Unprojects Git Hub, and we're gonna do new repository. Okay. Um, give your repository the name git test. So git dash test. And then the repository name input field check add a readme file. Um, add a readme file. Can I do this? I'm not sure if this is possible in here. So maybe we can do it like this and Here we go. All right, now we can do this side by side. Like so. Okay, all right, so we've done the get test. Um, we've checked add readme file and then create the repository by clicking the green create repository button at the bottom of the page. We're going to do the same thing they did, my first git uh, repo. And it's, we're going to leave it as public, add readme, and then create. Um, so this doesn't have the, oh yeah it does, add git nor license none. Okay, yeah, create. This will redirect you to your new repository on GitHub. To get ready to copy, clone this repository onto your local machine, click the green code button, then select the SSH option and copy the line below it. You must click the SSH option to get the correct URL. So we're gonna click SSH and then copy. Um, let's use the command line on your local machine to create a new directory for all your Odin projects. Um, terminal. We're going to go ahead and clear this out. Um, we're going to go cd. Alright. Then. We're, okay. So we're going to do make directory. repos. Alright. And then we're going to move to repos. Alright. Now we're in repos. Now it's time to clone your repository from GitHub onto your computer with git clone. Followed by the URL you copied in the last step. The full command should look similar to git clone like it has been done. That's it. You have select 
successfully connected to the, the repository you created on GitHub to your local machine. To test this, you can cd into the new git test folder that was downloaded and enter git remote v on your command line. This will display the URL of the repository you created on GitHub, which is the remote for your local copy. You may have also noticed the word origin at the start of git remote v output, which is the same of name which is the name of your remote connection. The name origin is both the default and the convention for the remote repository, but it could have just as easily been named party, parrot, or dancing banana. Don't worry about the details of origin for now. It will come up again near the end of this tutorial. Use the git workflow. Create a new file in git test folder called hello world. So I think we need to go ahead and do what it said here. So um, or in we can go cd um, git test no such file folder um, cd git test okay now we're in the folder I must have spelled something wrong he yeah, added under, underscore test um, and so I must have messed it up here, and I did. I did get dash test. All right, so I'm gonna have to remember that. Um, this will display the URL. Um, we're gonna do get remote dash v, and there it says um, Birder develops from the origin. Um, so now that we're in git tests, we're going to um, do um, create a new file in the git test folder called hello world.txt with the command touch hello underscore world.txt. Type git status in your terminal and the output. status. Your branch is up to date with origin slash main. Untracked files. Use git add file to include in what will be committed. So, okay. That worked. Nothing. The git status in the output notice that your hello world is shown in red, which means that this file is not staged. Alright, so now type git add hello underscore world.txt. This command adds your hello text world file to the staging area in Git. The staging area is part of the two-step process for making a comment, a commit in Git. Think of the staging area as a waiting room for your changes until you commit them. Now type git status. In the output, notice that your file is now shown in green, which means that this file is now in the staging area. Type git commit git commit dash m add hello underscore world dot txt and then type git status once more. Your branch is ahead of origin main by one commit. Use git push to publish your local commits. Nothing to commit, working tree clean. Indicating your changes have been committed. Don't worry if you get a message that says upstream is gone. This is normal and only shows when your cloned repository currently has no branches. It will be resolved once you have followed the rest of the steps in this project. The message your branch is ahead of origin <clears throat> made by one comment just means that you now have a newer snapshot than what is on your remote repository. You will be uploading your snapshots further down in this lesson. Okay, so now type git log, git log, and look at the output. You should see an entry for your at hello world text. Um, at hello world text, yes, and it was done by me. Um, 
You will also see details on the author who made the comment and the date and time of when the comment was made. If your terminal is stuck on the screen with the end at the bottom, just press Q to escape. You can configure settings for this but later, but don't worry about it too much for now. And ours doesn't say that, so I think we're good. Um, modify a file or two. Open README in your text editor of choice. In this example, we will open the directory in Visual Code by using the command code dot inside your repository. All right. <clears throat> yes, I trust the authors. Um, add hello Odin to line three of README. Can I make this smaller? It's hard to do this on one. Well, it's not that hard. I can get it figured out. All right, so on README, on code three, on line three, add hello Odin and save the file with control S. Okay, go back to your terminal or if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can open the built-in terminal by pressing control plus backtick. I'm gonna use the one we already have open. And so we're gonna type git status. All right, and so it tells us that it's been modified. Add readme to the staging area with git add readme.md. Can you guess what git status will output now? The green. That means readme text has been added to the staging area. The file hello world text will not show up because it has not been modified since it was committed. Open Hello World text and add some text to it. Save it and stage it. You can use git add to add all files to the current directory and hold on a second. It says move this over. Okay. <clears throat> Your branch is ahead by one commit. Um and we modified README. So Okay, the file hello world.txt will not show up because it has not been modified. Open hello world.txt, add some text to it. Um, save it and stage it. You can use git add dot to add files in the current directory and all subsequent di directories to the staging area. Then type git status once more. Everything should now be in the staging area. So how do I find file manager, repos, git test, hello world, changes. We'll save that. And then we're gonna do git status. All right, now it says modified hello world. And now we're going to do git add dot to add all files. Did that work? Git add dot. Then type git status. All right, changes to me commit it. They're both in there now. Finally, let's commit all these files that are in the staging area and add a descriptive comment message. So we're gonna say git commit dash m edit readme.md and hello underscore world txt. All right, and then two files change, two insertions. And then we're gonna type git status and it shows that your branch is ahead by two commits. All right, take one last look at your com commit history by typing git log, git log. All right, so we added a readme, we added hello world.txt, and then we initial commit. Pretty cool. Push your work to GitHub. Finally, let's upload your work to the GitHub repository you created at the start of this tutorial. 
Type in git push. To be more specific, type git push origin main. Git push origin main. Since you're not dealing with another branch other than main or a different remote as mentioned below, you can leave it as git push to save a few keystrokes. Note, if at this point you receive a message that says support for password authentication was removed on August 13, 2021, please use your personal access token instead. And we did not get that. Type git status one final time. Your branch is up to date with origin slash main. Nothing to commit. Working tree clean. When you reload the, your the repos repository on GitHub, you should see the readme.md and hello world text files that you just pushed there from your local machine. So let's go back to here and let's refresh it. And we got both files. That is really, really cool. Note slash warning. When trying to make simple changes to the files in your repo, such as attempting to fix a typo in your readme.md, you might be tempted to make this change directly via GitHub. However, it is best to avoid this as it will cause issues that require more advanced Git knowledge than we want to go over at this stage. It is covered in a future lesson. For now, it is advised to make any changes via your local files, then commit and push them to Git. Com Commit and push them using git commands in your terminal once ready. Cheat sheet. This is a reference list of most commonly used git commands. You might consider bookmarking this handy page. Try to familiarize yourself with the commands so that you can eventually remember them all. And what I plan to do, guys, is print this out. That's what I'm going to do. So I will do that when I'm done here. But... I suggest you guys do the same. Commands related to a remote repository, commands related to the workflow, commands related to checking status or log history, and the basic Git syntax, and Git best practices. There's a lot to learn about using Git, but it is worth taking the time to highlight some best practices so that you can be a better collaborator. Git is not only helpful when collaborating with others, it's also useful when working independently. You will be relying more and more on your own commit history in the future when revising old, revisiting old code. Two helpful best practices to consider are atomic commits and leveraging those atomic commits to make your commit messages more useful in the future to future collaborators. An atomic commit is a commit that includes changes related to only one feature or task of your program. There are two main reasons for doing this. First, if something you change turns out to cause some problems, it's easy to revert to the specific change without losing other changes. And second, it enables you to write better commit messages. You'll learn more about what a good commit message looks like in a future lesson. Changing the git commit message editor. If you're using Visual Studio Code, and you should be if you're following this curriculum and you don't want to get stuck writing a commit message in Vim because you accidentally use git commit without the message flag M, this command will make Visual Studio Code open a new tab with the ability to write your commit message and an optional description below it. Git config global core editor code dash wait. There will be no confirmation or any output on the terminal after entering this command. To make a commit with Visual Studio Code as the text editor, make sure to use the git commit, commit command with the M flag. Just type git commit and no message after that. Once you do this, a new tab will open. Now you can write your message and provide more information if you want right below it. After typing your commit message, save it and exit the tab. With that out of the way, now you can choose to either use git commit your message or git commit and enter your message with Visual Studio Code. Conclusion. You may not feel completely comfortable with git at this point, which is normal. It's a skill that you will get more comfortable at with as you use it. The main thing to take away from this lesson is the basic workflow. The commands you've learned here are the ones you will be using the most often with Git. Don't worry if you don't know all the commands yet or if they aren't quite sticking in your memory yet. They will soon be seared into your brain as you use them over and over in future Odin projects. In later Git lessons, we will cover some of the more advanced Git features such as branches. They will further expand your abilities and make you more productive. For now, concentrate on using the basics of Git that you've learned here for all of your projects from now on. You will soon know each of the basic Git commands from memory. <coughs> Alright, so... There's no additional resources, but I suggest you guys um, watch all the videos and do everything here and then see if you know the answers to these. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this one complete and I will see you guys on the next one.